Why do so many things nowadays need to be overcomplicated? You got all these fantasy experts out there trying to get too cute just so they can get some clicks. Because every once in a while, I'll see some rankings that just make me say, you gotta be kidding me. Sure, not every player is gonna be super fantasy football sexy, but sometimes it's the less sexy that surprise you. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today where, yes, we're talking about a few players who are currently ranked way too low. It's always important to use common sense and realistic probabilities when you're building out your fantasy football rankings. Now, maybe you're out there like, yeah, Jake, that's cool and all, but I ain't got time to do all that. No worries, that's why we're here. All you gotta do is hit that little subscribe button so you don't miss out on any potential league winning content. And I'm especially saying that to the 31% of you out there that are watching our videos but aren't subscribed. I can see you out there. Come on, come be a part of the nation. It's free and easy to do. But all right, let's go ahead and take a look at a few players whose current ranking is whack. Do people even say whack anymore? Am I, am I dated? Am I, I'm old, I know I'm old. There's probably some better slang out there I could have used. Just leave a comment down below on what word I should be using. Try to help me out, right? I'm over 40. I'm trying to stay hip with the culture. What should I have said? Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and look at the first guy up. It's gonna be Matthew Stafford, quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams. And if you were to look up his current consensus ranking, they have him as the overall quarterback 18 here in the off season. That right there is an example of people wanting that sexy fantasy football lineup and 36 year old Matthew Stafford isn't really that in fantasy football anymore. Maybe it's because he's been under 4,000 yards passing and 25 passing touchdowns in each of the last two seasons. And we already know that recency bias runs rampant in this industry. But you know what I said earlier about every once in a while, you just have to have a real conversation and look at some of those unsexy players, those guys who are not clickbait type players to really break down to see if we can find some hidden gems. So let's take a look at Matthew Stafford. And we can really do that by breaking down what happened the last couple of years to really give him that lower stat line. Well, 2022 was an absolute disaster. Stafford himself suffered multiple injuries in season and also dealt with elbow injuries injuries in the offseason leading up to the regular season. He ended up missing eight games in 2022, but don't forget, he also didn't have Cooper Cup eight games that season as well. For the majority of 2022, Ben Skoranek was the wide receiver one in LA. So I think it's safe to say between injuries and it, let's just chalk up 2022 as a lost season. So what about last year? What happened? Why couldn't he get to 4,000 yards passing and 25 touchdowns? Well, he had 3,965 yards passing and 24 touchdowns. He was only short 35 yards and one touchdown. And he did that all while still missing two games in 2023 as well. One of them due to injury. One of them was week 18, the last week of the season. But remember, he didn't have Cooper Cup for five games either. And Kyron Williams, their lead running back, he missed five games as well. If you were to follow the Rams at all last season, I think that you would agree that this offense really didn't hit its stride and really start to work as a cohesive group until the second half of the season. Because when Kyron Williams came back from his midseason injury in week 12, the offense absolutely clicked. And it's really easy to see when you look at the numbers. Prior to week 12, Matthew Stafford had only one game all year long where he threw multiple touchdowns out of the nine games he played. But then from week 12 on, he had multiple touchdowns in five of his six games. In fact, from week 12 through 17, Matthew Stafford was averaging 20.8 fantasy points per game and was the quarterback six overall. But if you look even closer, he was only two points away from being the quarterback three overall during that span, and he would have outscored Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and Dak Prescott. The dude was balling second half of the the season. And despite a down year, he still finished 2023 as a top 12 quarterback among all NFL quarterbacks in passing yards and passing touchdowns. But he also had a ridiculous amount of dropped passes by his pass catchers. 
Some of the most of any quarterback in the NFL, 36 of them to be exact, 13 of those came from Puka. And you have to expect, now going into his second year, Puka was just bombarded with volume early and often because Cooper Cup wasn't 100%. This guy is going to get better which is somewhat scary. I don't know if we can expect that type of volume each and every year, but 13 drops a season, probably not going to happen from Puka. But then that takes us to 2024, and the Rams are going to enter this season healthier than they have in the past few years. We know we have Puka Nakua coming off a record-breaking rookie year. Cooper Cup should enter the 2024 season healthy. They brought back Demarcus Robinson. He ended last season on a hot streak. Kyron Williams, he should be healthy and good to go. Arguably one of the best running backs in the NFL. And then Tyler Higby, a very capable tight end. I have no idea why Matthew Stafford is ranked lower right now than where he actually finished last season. Because if you look at everything and the way it's lining up for this year, he should be on pace to have an overall solid season. I, it just doesn't make logical sense. The situation is going to improve, yet he's going to finish lower than he did last year. I'm not buying it. Matthew Stafford is still way too low in the consensus rankings. Now, no, I'm not sitting here and saying that he should be some top 10 overall quarterback in fantasy, but he should be verge top 12, probably in that range of 12 to 14 at worst, in my opinion. But now we're going to go ahead and move on to a running back because right now, Raheem Mostert of the Miami Dolphins is currently the running back 27 overall in consensus rankings. Let me get this straight. Last season, Raheem Mostert finished as the running back two overall in fantasy football and scored 21 flipping touchdowns, yet he's ranked by the experts as RB27 here this season. Oh, but Jake, there's no way he can go out there and produce 20 touchdowns again. He's a regression candidate. No crap. But do people actually realize out there the difference in fantasy points from the RB2 to the RB27 overall? It's like a difference of 100 points. Last year's running back 27 was Zach Moss, and the dude didn't even have a job all year long. You think that's where Raheem Mostert is going to regress to? Why? Because of Devonna Chan? Well, that doesn't really make sense to me because they played nine games together in 2023. Over those nine games, Devonna Chan averaged 15.87 fantasy points per game. Mostert, 17.6 fantasy points per game. Sure, Devonna Chan had some huge games, especially in week three, where he scored 49.3 fantasy points. That had to kill Raheem Mostert that week, right? No. Raheem Mostert still went out and scored 41.7 fantasy points in the same game. In fact, there was only one game all year long that they played together where Devonna Chan scored in double digits and Raheem Mostert didn't. These are two running backs that can definitely coexist. Miami ran the ball 456 times last season. That was 15th overall in the NFL. It's not like it's some crazy number that they're not going to be able to duplicate once again here this season. And what really helps out Raheem Mostert is he isn't one of those guys that needs 300 plus touches to go out there and produce in fantasy football. His career high in touches was just last year, and it was only 234, yet still finished as the running back two. The dude is just a lightning bolt, and he can he can bust off the big one in a heartbeat. May not be the, the best wording to use. He may break off a big one. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean. He was top 10 among all running backs in the NFL in juke rate, evaded tackles, and breakaway runs. 6.7% of his carries resulted in 15 or more yards. We already know this Miami offense is great. The boxes aren't going to be stacked because Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle will absolutely kill one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside if they do stack the boxes. They're going to be a top offense once again. And do you just realize that if Raheem Mostert has similar yardage to what he had last year, which was not crazy, just over a thousand yards and still scored 11 less touchdowns, he would have enough fantasy points to at least be the running back 15 overall. However, 
currently sitting at running back 27 is an absolute joke. Okay, we got a couple more players we're gonna talk about here, but if you're enjoying the content here so far, do me a favor and hit the like button. It greatly helps us out. If this video can get to 600 likes, I'm gonna pick a random commenter from down below and give them a free 2024 fantasy football draft guide. It's the best deal in the industry. We have dynasty content, redraft content, free updates all the way up until week one of the regular season. It's definitely going to give you an advantage in your fantasy football leagues. Be sure to head over to tfhdraftguide.com for more info and to get yours ordered. There's links down below in the description. All right, next guy we're talking about is going to be Jaden Reed, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. And when I see Jaden Reed ranked as the current wide receiver 35 overall, now you guys are starting to understand why I'm going gray and I'm balding. Wide receiver 35. The guy didn't even get a solidified role in this offense until after the team's week six bye last season. From week seven on, he was the wide receiver seven overall in fantasy football, averaging just over 13 fantasy points per game, and finished the season as the wide receiver 23. So he finished as a wide receiver two overall on the season, despite not having a large role until week seven. And now that they know how to utilize him, he's going to get worse and barely be a top 36 wide receiver in fantasy. And really, for what reason? They swapped out Aaron Jones for Josh Jacobs in the backfield. Everything else is going to be the same in Green Bay. Yeah, Jake, but Christian Watson was hurt a lot last year. Of course he was. It's Christian Watson. He's always hurt. And why are we overly worried about Christian Watson when he's actually on the field? The guy's averaging three catches for 45 yards a game. If he doesn't score a touchdown, he absolutely kills you, in other words. Jaden Reed gets carries out of the backfield. He gets a ton of work out of the slot, which you know we love our slot snaps over here. And he averages over one deep target and one red zone target a game. So, so what are we doing here, really? Because we already know that Jordan Love has come out and proven that he's capable of being a high-end NFL quarterback. Romeo Dobbs, he all but disappeared once Jaden Reed got his role in Green Bay, and the chances of Christian Watson getting hurt again have to be absolutely astronomical. Wide receiver 35 overall for Jaden Reed is way too low. Now, similar when we were talking to Matthew Stafford, I'm not sitting here and saying that Jaden Reed should be some top 12 wide receiver, but he should definitely be inside the top 24, not barely making it inside the top 36. And let's end it with Jacoby Myers, wide receiver of the Las Vegas Raiders, who's currently wide receiver 47. I got so much hate last offseason when I said Jacoby Myers was good enough to take away some of the Devontae Adams ceiling. Then Myers went out, he was a top 24 wide receiver and averaged over 11 fantasy points per game, all while doing it with a mixture of quarterbacks, whether it was Aiden O'Connell, Jimmy G, or Brian Hoyer. But it's not like that was the first time he's put up some fantasy points with below average quarterback play. The dude still averaged over 10 fantasy points a game in New England in 2022 with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi under center. Heck, even Devontae Adams himself has come out and said, listen, not too many people are talking about how good Jacoby Myers is. I'm actually learning a lot for him. The dude remains a super underrated wide receiver. And now we know Josh Jacobs is gone. They've brought in Alexander Madison to pair in the backfield with Zamir White. Jimmy G, he's also gone. And as of right now, it's a quarterback fight between Aiden O'Connell and newly acquired quarterback Gardner Minshew. However, there is a lot of speculation surrounding the upcoming NFL draft and whether or not Las Vegas selects a quarterback. There are a lot of rumors out there saying that the Raiders could make a move at Michael Penix out of Washington. Now, while I sit here and I'm not the biggest Penix truther, he is an upgrade and an improvement over everything that Jacoby Myers had last season. But now we also know that Hunter Renfro is gone. Not that he got a bunch of targets, but he's no longer in Las Vegas. Second year tight end Michael Mayer, a lot of hype surrounding him last season. He was never really a part of the game plan. We know that Jacoby Myers is making a chunk of money to be a playmaker once again in Las Vegas. All the opposing defenses know that Devontae Adams is who they 
they need to pay attention to. Really leaves a lot of one-on-one coverage for Jacoby Myers. I mean, safety valves can be sexy too. The wide receiver 47 last year was Jackson Smith in Jigba, and he scored single-digit fantasy points in all but three games last year. Jacoby Myers in 2024 is a great value who's hugely, is hugely, hugely, largely, He's disrespected AF. All right, so these were a few players that I thought were ranked way too low at this point of the offseason. I know the NFL draft is right around the corner, and after that, we're going to get a pretty clear understanding of the direction of some of these teams. But this is why it's so important to pay attention all offseason. Every single year, there are players that slip through the cracks. It's those players that help you win fantasy football championships. All right, don't forget about our like goal, right? 600 likes, and I'll pick a random commenter from down below to give a free 2024 fantasy football draft guide. So do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, do your part to make the world a better place. I'm a hit, nah.